Hi, everyone. This is an unlisted project stream, which means that I'm going to do a project, but I'm not streaming live. If I like it, I will go back and put it to public and publish it. Now, I've been having some trouble with my audio right at the very beginning of my videos when I do unlisted streams. And I don't know if it's the hand movement interfering with the microphone or the microphone has to kick in. I'm not sure. But every now and then, it will skip. And I did change the microphone to my computer and, or to my camera above instead of to my computer. So I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with the microphone. This is a kind of a test. But I thought I would, yes, I have my March Art Journal. Let's work in it. Let's work. It's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful watercolors that Lucia sent me yesterday. I want to open them up, take off the little wrappers, and maybe do some swatches. So that's on my list of things to do today. And, of course, Penelope, she's got to get in here. She says, you can't stream without me, Mary. So we'll just put her up here and let her supervise. She keeps me company. I have some tea. I got so thirsty last night. Oh, I got thirsty in the stream last night. I talked and talked and talked. So here's my March journal. Thank you to everybody who's been saying how much they like it. It really did turn out. Sherry Lynn sent me the canvas pad. And then last night in the stream, I got a lot of my things done. So I went ahead and did the pocket pages here. And I did the wraparound over here. So I'm really happy with that. I'm happy with how that turned out. Yes, yes, very happy with it. But I haven't really chose a theme for it yet. I thought I was going to use a source book that I have. It has a lot of patterns in it. And it looks like that I can reuse those patterns without fear of copyright. But I didn't want to cut those out of the book. So I chose another book. And here's the book. Mother Goose. Mother Goose Rhymes. And, of course, you can see this book is beat up on the side. I can probably feel pretty comfortable in, in reusing this book. It does have a nice binding. It's got one, two, three, four, five signatures in there. And it does look like they're stitched. But uh, this book belonged to Bill and John. Bill and John. <laughs> it's mine now, Bill. And you can see how the page is aged along the edge. It's faded. The light has hit it here. And, of course, it's aged. It's an aged paper. It's an old book. I was looking for a copyright. Oh, look at this. Sing a song of sixpence. Oh, that's cool. This is going to fit in my... This is going to fit in my March journal perfectly. Um... Illustrated by E-U-A-L-I-E -E and Lewis Lelinsky, 1922, 27, 31, and 32. So, and here's the index to the first lines. And then it starts. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. And see, this book is already, the pages are already torn in it. So, it, I really don't mind reusing it. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. I was looking for a cat. Oh, there's a cat. A dog and a cat. A dog and a cat went out together to see some friends just out of the town. Said the cat to the dog, what do you think of the weather? I think, ma'am, the rain will come down. But don't be alarmed. I've an umbrella. That will shelter us both, said the amiable fella. I'm looking for a cat because we told a story of Bandit last night in our live stream. Little Bandit. I had another break in at my virtual Mary Atelier 
downtown, and it turned out to be a little kitty cat, Bandit. We named her Bandit. And I'm looking for a nursery rhyme. Now, there was the dog and the cat, and they kept telling me I need to get a dog. <laughs> oh, look. Little Miss Muffet. I love Little Miss Muffet. Oh, look at her. She sat on a tuppet eating her curds and whey. Oh, I love this. That might go on one of the facing pages. And, yes, I am going to use the back of them. Um, Hector Protector. There were two black birds. There were two black birds. The king of France. There was an old woman of Norwich. I'll have to jot those down, but I love this. This will go in one of my pages. I had a little pony, Hickory Dickory Dare. Mary had a pretty bird. Pussycat, Pussycat, where have you been? Oh, I like that one. Too bad it doesn't. There's not a picture to go with it. See? See what happens to tape? This tape has to be old, old. And look how it's darkened on the page. It's still there. It's still holding it, but it's it's really turned that page dark. And I would warn you, too, away from using masking tape. Um, who knows what some of this washi tape is going to look like in 10 years. Mistress Mary, quite contrary. Everybody calls me Mary Mary, quite contrary. And I have an answer for that. I'm not contrary. I just think differently than you do. That's what I've said all my life. When they go, Mary, Mary, quite contrary. I go, I'm not contrary. <laughs> I just think differently than you do. Oh, look, here's Tom. He was a Piper's son. I love these full page illustrations. Well, I was looking for a kitty cat. I'm not sure. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater. Look, look at those. Baby, my dolly. There's a neat little clock. Hippity hop to the barber shop. Oh, King Cole. <laughs> Very nice illustrations. If this book were not so beat up, I would be afraid to cut out of it. But Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard. Well, I wish I had a full page of a kitty cat. I'm just going to have to get that from one of you, aren't I? From one of you. Uh, did we look all the way back here? I think I did. Because I started with... Uh... Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. I saw three ships. So the best kitty cat I'm going to get, I think, is this one. So maybe I'll abandon the kitty cat idea. And I like, where was that one I really liked? That's up toward the front. There's old Mother Hubbard, old King Cole. I like old King Cole. There's a merry old soul. A merry old soul was he. I think there was another one. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater. Tom, he was a piper's son. Tom, Tom, the piper's son, stole a pig, and away he ran. It's the pigs. <laughs> now, I guess it wasn't so much toward the front as I thought it was. Here, Little Miss Muffet. I'm loving Little Miss Muffet. I'm going to take her out. And, you know, this book is stitched. It's almost a shame. But for those of you who love who love the books, you know, I got this probably probably at the thrift store. Um, so somebody gave it away, would have trashed it if so let's just use it. The paper's nice and nice and thick. That's a nice paper. A uh, little Miss Muffet though. Little Miss Muffet, she tat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Now, I'm not going to cut that out. Let's see. So this is going to be my theme. I think, I think I'll just... Nursery rhymes, Mother Goose nursery rhymes is going to be my theme. And, of course, I'll probably use this book uh, 
I'll probably have to mend the binding, but I'll probably use it for other altered art. I'm pretty sure that it's most likely out of copyright. Let's see if I can get this on. I probably can if I trim it down on these sides. And I, you know, it is a shame to do this, but I want it in my journal. That's the way it goes. I have this piece of fabric. I'm making, I am making cards. You know, I'm working with my, there. I am making cards out of Aunt Beck's Dirty Dozen from last week. And I want to paint this entire piece of fabric. I'll do that. I'll be doing that in this stream, too. And then I have my history. I'm collecting my history notes for March 1 and March 2. I'm going to put those in. But let's go ahead and work with Little Miss Muppet. I love Little Miss Muppet. And another thing about these journals that we're working on in our altered books, this is not a book for sale. This is my personal journal. This is nothing I'm photocopying. I'm using the original. So I'm pretty confident that I can use it. And the, copy date, the copyright date. Now you have to be careful when you cut this. You have to be careful when you cut these older papers because... They do want to tear. And this is not just the blade. This is the older paper. That's the older paper doing that. And this is a pretty thick older paper. This is margin. I can say Jerry likes these. Jerry at Recycle Parts for Art will save these blank margins. And she'll use those in her altered book. So I'm going to save mine. But you do need to be very careful when you're cutting these. Um. Uh, because they do tend to want to tear. Let's see if I can come at it this way. You know, I'd be almost, almost easier to cut it with my scissors. And if you've ever cut an old, old, book you know exactly what I mean it has nothing to do with a dull blade it has to do with the age and the thickness of the paper let's get some of these off I have the same problem with an old newspaper the paper is so delicate it's just it's uh it's very fibrous it's breaking down Let's see. I'm going to save Little Miss Muffet, though. Let's see. But I am going to cut out here. And the advantage that I have with this picture is I have a nice line to cut on. I know exactly where I'm cutting. So it's just a matter of cutting it out. And I'm going to save the Little Miss Muffet. Let's see this kind of chunked up that older paper there. That's okay. Maybe I'll put some washi tape around it. So my theme for March is going to be nursery rhymes. And who knows? Maybe I'll make up a nursery rhyme. Would you like to hear a nursery rhyme made up by Mary? I need a theme. Maybe I'll make up a nursery rhymes about nursery rhymes. <laughs> make up a nursery rhyme about washi tape. Make up a nursery rhyme about art journaling. There was a little girl with a little curl right in the middle of her. Oh, that one's already been used. Sorry. <laughs> now, do I want to put it right in the center? No, I think I did in my February. I put that theme of the book right there. So maybe I will put it right in here. And put Little Miss Muffet. Or I could skip a page. Here's my calendar page. I could put it here. It might go better here. I'm thinking because I'll be flipping to this page quite a bit. It's already the 2nd of March, which is Saturday. I think, and I've got 
I'm kind of hesitant to put it off opposite of a calendar page because I know I'll be opening these two pages a lot when I write. I got Paul Rubens here. Maybe I'll put it here and then I'll have two pages done here. Okay, so I'm going to use... Oh, I love working in these art journals. So... There was an old lady who liked to do art. When she got a page done, she thought she was smart. <laughs> That's at the beginning two lines of my nursery rhymes. There was an old lady who liked to do art. When she finished the page, she thought she was smart. Her friends would watch her. They thought it was great fun. They all laughed when her page was done. <laughs> How do you like that for a nursery rhyme? I need to dot that down. They all giggled when her page was finally done. <laughs> they all were amazed that her page was finally done. There was an old lady who liked to do art. When she finished the page, she thought she was smart. All of her friends... No. Um... She would think that it was great fun. <laughs> she was so proud when she finally got done. <laughs> Her friends would giggle when she finally got done. I don't know. I have to refine that nursery rhyme. Maybe, I'll, maybe I will do a little sketch of the old lady who liked to do art. How about that? Would you like an illustration? See, that's the fun that you can have with art journaling and get inspired. Maybe I'll just jot that little nursery rhyme down in my journal for today. Maybe I'll try to make up nursery rhymes. I don't know if I can do one every day, but I'll bet I can do a lot of them. Just pick a theme and go at it. Nursery rhymes are kind of fun. I'm just going to tear that off. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And you know what's so cool about these? Is look at this big, broad, big, broad areas of color. Big, broad areas of color. The yellows, the orange, and here's the spider who came to sit down beside her. Boy, that spider does not look like Sebastian at all. There's no heart on his back. <laughs> she gets his filter curds away there. Little cottages in the background. And look at this white area of cloud here. That takes up almost a fourth of the page. If you um, would divide this page in a half vertically and horizontally, that page takes up, that cloud takes up almost a fourth of that entire page. And, of course, you have a nice vertical placement of Little Miss Muffet. How fun this is. All right. She's going to go in here. Let me bring my book down into, into view. And I'm just going to... Now, do I want to paint the background? I think I do. And I'm thinking a nice yellow color. And I just happen to have a nice yellow color out. So let's get some wax paper. I'm really curious... To watch the replay of this video and see how the audio is going to come across. If it's going to be worse or if it's going to be better. Penelope, you're going to have to get out of the way because I'm going to be painting. And we will put it here. And let me see. Here and here, I believe. But I'm going to paint a nice little wash. And I have my brush from last night still pretty clean, I believe. So let's just uh, put my iced tea out of the way. Get Put it over on the side here. I am hard on things. Let me tell you, I'm hard on my brushes. I'm hard on my art journals. 
<laughs> yeah, nice, pretty primary color. Be careful that I don't get paint off on. I, th I think it's like a chamois. It feels like a chamois that came in that Paul Rubens watercolor box. I think that a chamois, when you go out water painting, you can kind of. I think Janet looked it up. I don't use that when I watercolor. I usually wipe my brushes when I go out urban sketching. I wipe my brush on a, off on another watercolor pad, like a paint pad. And then I use that paint pad. I've done that before as a, um, boy, that's really thin in there. I use my paint pad where I wipe off all those brush strokes as background for another art journal or an ATC or a tag or something like that. I did that, I believe, in 2000 and, well, it would be 15 when I was still living in Madison. I haven't, I did not do a lot of urban sketching last year. I was not prepared for, but this year I think I'll get out more. It's snowing out again this weekend, so I won't be getting out this weekend. So heat gun alert, heat gun alert. I was going to turn my, and I don't know if I can watch my unlisted videos here or not. Clear my, it's unlisted, so I don't know if it's going to show up here. Yes, it does, because I am me. I am me on here, so I can listen to me. But nobody else should be able to come in unless I send them the link. And that's okay. There's a lot going on this morning. Beth Schuler is starting to stream. I watched her first stream. Well, she streamed last night as a as a live stream when I was live streaming, and uh, just to kind of test out her settings. And we went over and visited her channel. I'll leave a link to her channel. I think she's going to try to stream. I don't know if she's going to stream tonight, but maybe we talked about maybe Tuesday night. She was, if you start streaming, if it's all possible, I know everybody has their own schedules, but if it's all possible, it's nice to have a consistent time to stream. And Beth is using Hangouts, so I might start a Hangout on a Friday night, invite her over. And so she can get some subscribers. We'll talk about that privately. But Beth, if you're listening, you might consider that. I know how hard it is when you're starting out to get people to come and watch your channel. Uh, you're lost in this big ocean of YouTube creators. And believe me, there's a lot of people who are doing art on YouTube. And I made a promise to myself when I start, first started out that if I survived, <laughs> and and I have, I'm just about at 7,500. I'm not growing as fast as some of the larger channels uh, because YouTube was my main social media. But I made a promise to myself that when I got larger, I would come in and support the smaller channels and help them get started. And uh, if you're a smaller channel and you're, you want uh, to um, come visit my maybe a chat or live stream and, and invite my users I, or my viewers over. My attitude on that is, is uh, I don't control the internet. And I like to help other people get started. That's my other attitude. And my other attitude is people who watch channels are smart enough to know where they want to go and who they want to watch. So um, I have no reservation if you're a new channel or newer channel, or even if you are under 500 subscribers, or well, no matter how many, you, you know, uh, if you're a larger channel, come visit me. Barb Owens dropped in several times, and we just love it when Barb Owens drops in. 
and uh, Dee Dee Willingham dropped in the other day, and they are both larger channels than than Mary. So um, yeah, come visit my streams. I I think it's fun when people come and visit, and you know, even if they say, you know, I'm just getting a start, I need subscribers, or come visit my channel. Um, I mean, and it has, I would prefer it be art, you know, um, we don't want it. You probably won't get many of my subscribers if you're not doing art videos or anything like that. But, uh, and of course, keep your language clean. If you come to my streams, we don't want you come coming with dirty language. You'll get kicked out pretty fast. <laughs> so, uh, um, foul mouth. And I will say that YouTube is starting to crack down on some things. And that makes me want to, to crack down too. So I did put on the, put my, turn my setting on that says, if, uh, you know, a warning not to, to uh, hold for any dirty language or anything that's questionable, YouTube will hold it and I can moderate it. So, um, I prefer if you come in that you talk clean and, uh, and you know, do art. If you're doing art videos, talk art. Well, you don't only have to talk art, but if you're inviting people to your channel, it should probably be an art channel that you're inviting them to. Or they probably will not subscribe unless they're just being friendly. But I leave that up to, to the person who's visiting I'm the, like I said I don't control the internet I don't control who watches me and who doesn't and when they do and any of that if that to me that's all up to them I they're smart enough to know who they want to subscribe to and who they don't who they want to watch but I do like to support channels that are just getting a start that's kind of one of my one of my that's a part of my mission statement and no, I don't have a half million subscribers. I don't have 3 million subscribers. I don't even have 10,000 subscribers. I just grow at my own pace. And I'm happy with that. I, I figure I have just enough that I can handle when I can handle it. And I think that's how you should look at if you're getting a start. Of course, you want to go out and promote your channel. That's just a part of wanting to promote your channel. So you're certainly welcome to come over. And if you have an art channel, if you're just getting a start like Beth is, you're certainly welcome to come in and come and say, hey, I'm just starting to stream. Come and check check out my channel. So there we go. There's little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet eating her curds and whey. Along come a spider and sat down beside her and scared little Miss Muffet away. Let's get the title here. Little Miss Muffet. Oh, I kind of like this. We can put this right down here. Let's trim this out. I think I'll put the tape on it first. Fa la la dee. Yes, I know. I covered up the back. I, I did. We're just going to put tape right across here. Hmm. Bring it right about into here. Now, if you can see, this tape is very sticky. It picks up the it it picks up the top layer of this older paper. It uh, you have to be careful when you're using this. But I'm going to cut it from this side so I can see to cut a straight line. <laughs> So nursery rhymes. I wrote a nursery rhyme. Let's let's write it on here with my calligrapher pen. There old was an old woman who loved to do art. When she finished the page, she thought she was smart. <laughs> oh, how her friends giggled when she finally got done. But that old lady thought it was great fun. Something like that. <laughs> That's my nursery rhyme. And who knows, I might make up another verse. Her friends gave her, her friend mailed her, her friend gave her uh, 
Let's see. I think I'm going to draw a line here. It's too much. Her friend gave her some watercolor. I have to have a rhyme that, a word that rhymes with color. Buller, duller, guller. Uh-oh. What rhyme? What word rhymes with color? Oh, no. I need a word that rhymes with color. All right. That's your assignment if you're watching this. Give me a word that rhymes with color. I won't write the second verse until I get a word that rhymes with color because my mind's not thinking of it right now. Color. All I can think is muller, duller. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Duller. Um, her friend sent her some watercolor. Her pages were no longer ugly and duller. <laughs> oh, my. They were bright and glittery. They were, they were bright and full of all sorts of glitter. Fritter, hitter, mitter, ditter. Uh-oh, now I need a word that rhymes with glitter. All right, this is your assignment. For verse 2, give me a word. I've got duller, but maybe you can think of another word that rhymes with color. And give me a word that rhymes with glitter. That's your assignment. I need a word, one word that rhymes with, and be a, a word that I will not be ashamed to put in a nursery rhyme. Remember, I'm writing nursery rhymes, not adult, <laughs> not adult content here. That's your assignment to me. I'll be watching. Comment below if you know of a word that rhymes with color and a word that rhymes with glitter. Oh, there we go. I love it. I love it. So this really is my first page in my art journal as far as art goes. Uh, I put the calendar page in. It's Paul Rubin's chamois cloth. And I think that this will just be, oh, we did the, we did the doodle game seven last night, which reminds me, I'm going to start working on my doodle games. I've got probably about 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, maybe not 60, maybe about 45 doodles, maybe not quite 45 either. Cause the first two, I did 10 each. So there's 20. So game three and four would be 30. Game five and six would be 40. Game seven would be 45 doodles. Uh-oh, we got, oh, this is just a flip. I should put a bobby pin there. Okay, look at that. Oh, I love it. Now I'm going to write that nursery rhyme down. I'm going to see if I can write more nursery rhymes every day. Won't that be fun? Um, but before we do that, I'm going to flip way to the back. And uh, I want to do my history page. And let's see, I leave the black, the black, the back page blank for now. This will probably be an index page for my fib sketch a day. So let's see. This will be the index page for this. Maybe I'll make this the index page. And this will be fib sketch a day. I. Sketch a day, fib sketch a day. Maybe not this one, maybe this one. So 6, 12, 18, skip the graph ones, 18, 24, 32. Um, I get about six sketches for, I, I, I move them down. Let's, let's go back here. I'm not going to draw them out here. I, I get about fi six fib sketch a days on a page. And I have been drawing out six squares. But I might now just draw. I'm already two behind. This is March 2nd. I have to go out and get the list. So there's six. 
here will be add six would be 12 and I sketch on the other side would be 18 and 24 and six would be 30 and I think there are 31 days in March <laughs> let's make sure I forgot I forget I'm getting old and and uh, absent-minded. Where's my calendar here? Calendar. March has 31 days. <laughs> so this is a um, crystal board, I think. And this is... I think that I'm going to do my... Let's see. I've got 30 there, 36 here. So this will be the end of my Feb Sketch, Feb -sketch -a days here. I allowed for 36 of them. I'll put in some extras. This is a back of an immigrant book cover. So let's do the same thing for the ATCs. That'll help me find my way in here. This is how I journal. So I'll have a, an introductory page. I'll do something with this later. This is my calendar page. Calendar page. These are my art journal pages here. So I do four, four ATCs on a page. And I'm going to do ATCs for every day in, in the month. I won't, I'll do them four at a time. So there's four. And this is the back of four. And I do them on my graph paper. So there's four. I have to find graph paper. Eight. There's another book cover. Four, eight. This is how I figure things out. Four, eight, twelve. And I'll be working on these throughout the entire month of March. There's twelve. Sixteen is coming up. And I just mark it in there so I don't use that page later. There's sixteen. I have plenty. Here's coming up with 20. Twenty-four. Yeah. I'm looking for graph paper. There's 24, 28, and one more. Here we go, 32. And I'll have plenty left over in here. Now, I do hope to get out and do some urban sketching in this journal. I have um, two signatures of, of uh, 15 full pages. 15 full pages of 11 by 7, but when I fold it in half, I get, uh, of course, uh, 15, so 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 15 times 4 is 60, so I have 60 and 60, so I have about 120 pages for 31 days in March, and I think that might be good, especially when I go out urban sketching, I might have to even tip some in. So the other thing that I was going to do in here was do my history page. That's why I numbered everything. Uh, and I like to skip a few pages in in the beginning because I never know what I want to put out at the back. See, and I've already marked these. So I know I don't want to do history pages on those. Yeah. 30, 24. I might do my history page on this graph paper. And I call it on this date. But we're just going to glue in March 1 and 2 here. Here's March 1. And I cut these out of the, our daily paper. It's just something fun that I like to do. Uh, I like history. And they have a section in our daily paper which says on this date, a whole bunch of different things happened. And you can find the same thing on the internet. 
but I like to cut it out because it's already printed out. Sometimes I don't see it in there. Let's see. There's March 1st. And on March 1st, I know this one went to March 2nd. So on this date, um, yeah, Republican, was this today's? No, I think this was yesterday's. Republican Rutherford B. Hayes was declared winner of the 1876 presidential election over Democrat Sam Samuel. On this date in 1788, comedian Charles Chaplin was stolen by extortionists from his grave. The body was recovered near Lake Geneva, Switzerland, 11 weeks later. I'm wondering if that's... Uh, is that today's? Is this yesterday's? Here, we'll find out. In 1967, Nebraska became the 37th state. I think that was probably yesterday's, but I'm going to Google it. Uh, I try to keep my dates straight here. I try to do them the day that they... Um, let's see. Nebraska became 37th state. Nebraska... becomes 37th, not 47th, 37th state. Go. Come on. It's thinking. Come on. Why isn't it working? Yeah. New tab. Nebraska becomes 37th state. Am I buffering somehow? Here. On March 1st. Yeah, so this was March 1st. So March 1st, Nebraska. Here, this goes here. And this goes there. That's how that goes. So, George Washington signed a measure authorizing the first census. Nikola Tesla, public dem demonstrated the radio, and John F. Kennedy signed a, so what I do, I pick out a couple, I don't want them all, what I do is pick out a couple, and then I sketch off of these, if I want to do a sketch, like, now George Washington, I don't think I'll get a, a good sketch, a, a reference photo, if I got a reference photo, it would probably be a painting or something, so I think that I'm going to clip out Andrew Jackson and Nikola Tesla in 1867 and 1893. Oh, I might do John Kennedy, too. I'll get three of them. So John Kennedy, on March 1st, 1961. Signed an executive order establishing the Peace Corps. 1893, Nikola Tesla publicly demonstrated radio. And 1867, Nebraska became the first, uh, the 37th state as President Andrew Jackson signed a resolution. Uh, proclamation. I said resolution. Oops. See, I used all that. I should put these in my used box. I have a used box. <laughs> it's the same as my go-to box. This one's getting there, let me tell you. As these glue sticks get used. 
And I do have a vinyl desktop cover here. So I wipe it off with, I'll wipe it off with um, baby white at glue or a paper towel with hand sanitizer. So March 1, I'm just showing you how I art journal, some of the fun I have in my art journal. It's a lot of fun to create the journal, create the cover. I've been doing that now for, this is my third month in 2019, in January, February, and now we're in March already. Wow. Okay, on March 2nd, I just cut out the date. This doesn't have to be perfect. It's just Mary Plan in her journal because she likes history. Let's go ahead and put March 2nd in here. And I'll just kind of put it up on the, yeah, in the little space left by March 1st here over on the right hand side, right in here, right in there. Now, what do we want to do? Um, Ruther B. Hayes was declared the winner in the 1876 presidential election. The remains of Charlie, comedian Charles Chaplin were stolen by extortionists. I think I'll just do those two. Well, that's what I'll do. That's enough. Don't need to put the whole article in there. There's a lot of history going on. There's a lot of history going on. Yeah, poor Charlie Chaplin. Somebody went in there and stole his bones. Can't leave the poor guy rest in peace. Probably thought they were going to sell him on the black market or something. Why would they do such a thing? Leave the guy alone. He's dead. <laughs> no rest for the wicked, I guess. But I'm not calling Charlie Chaplin wicked. They probably did it for money. extortionists probably gonna try to get money out of the family or something stupid people oops Okay, I think I'm back. The phone rang. When I learn how to use the video editor in our new studio for the creators on YouTube, I will go in and edit all that out. Kind of dead space in there, but uh, I'm not sure it's totally working yet. And then I just kind of draw a line like this. And a line like that to let me know. I could just put one and two here. One, two. And then I'll go back in and put on this date or history page or something like that. So the other thing I wanted to do is, is I want to write down my nursery rhyme. Let's do a nursery rhyme. And I think I'll use my calligraphy pen to do it. Only I'm not going to do it there. Shall I do it on this? Shall I do it here? Yeah, I think I will. And I don't know if I will illustrate it. Let's put this wax paper here. I don't know if I will illustrate it. I might later, but not today. I'll have to think of a good illustration. But this nursery rhyme will be a nursery rhyme by Mary. Mary Abrams at the Mary Atelier. Mary Dale Abrams. And I was going to Let's see. Is this my? That's a pen plus gear. I don't want that. I want my. I want my calligraphy. Oh, there goes the phone again. I 
I swear, they know when I'm streaming. <laughs> I put it on mute, and this is what, probably about 15 minutes into the stream. I'll have to check and make sure it got muted. But all it did was ring. All right. So there was an old lady who loved to do art. When she finished a page, she thought she was smart. Um, now let's change it. There was an old lady who loved to do art. Maybe I'll draw a picture of me. When she worked on a page, she thought she was smart. She thought the painting was very great fun and was so proud when she was finally done. That's how we'll do. So let's do the T. Let's see if I can do whoops, that's the that's the wide one. Let's go to the skinny one. There was an old lady. Now see I have to get my my hand in here. Let's see. There was okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I can do it here. Something like that. There was an old lady Oh, I got to put lady in here. <laughs> there was an old lady. And I'm just going to keep writing in small case here. Who loved to... I'm just going to do art. That's an E. Let's see. When she finished the page, she thought she was smart. <laughs> Finished a page, and I'm thinking art journaling, I should say a painting. When she finished a painting, I'm going to say page. It fits. She thought she was smart. This might get revised. Nursery rhymes usually do. <clears throat> uh, I forgot the second verse already. Uh, she painted and painted until she was done. Then she looked at it and said, oh, great fun. <laughs> That's how it's going to go. Let's see. I got to do my S. How did I do my S? I come like that, like that. How did I do my S? See, I forget on my my writing here. This comes up, up, maybe down like that. No, like this. I have to practice my S. That's an L. I forgot how to make an S. Let's Google an S. <laughs> S. In script. S in script.
Well, yeah, I was on the right track. So I come down. There, something like that. Now I forgot my verse. She painted a she painted and painted it until she was done. Then she said, Oh my, what great fun. She painted. <laughs> she forgot. She forgot what she was going to do. <laughs> she painted and painted. until she was done. Then she looked at it and said, no, then, oh. Yeah, then she looked at it. So I love to do art. She finished the page. She thought she was smart. She painted and painted until she was done. Then she looked at it and cried. Oh, great fun. <laughs> until she was done. Then she looked at it. I'm just going to put what's in my head. Looked at it. And said, that was fun. There's my nursery rhyme for today. How'd you like that? There was an old lady who loved to do art. When she finished a page, she thought she was smart. She painted and painted until she was done. And then she looked at it and said, that was fun. So shall we draw the old lady? Shall we draw the old lady doing her art? Let's draw the old lady. Ah, let's see. I have to think. Let's put her glasses on. I'll start with the eyes and the nose. And she wears this funny clip in her hair. Like that. And she puts, has some straggly hair, pulls her hair up, has an ear here, got her lips, there we go, and here's her longish face, there was an old lady, and she's painting, so she's got her arm her arm is holding a paintbrush, so we'll put her arm painting a paintbrush here. Holding a paintbrush. And it's her shoulder. Let me get her hair straggly down there. And what shall her other hand be doing? Holding a palette? Let's put her other arm holding this palette. Uh, uh, see, the palette will come this way. And yeah, something like that. <laughs> Let's see, her thumb comes through this little hole here. That's how it goes. I'll we'll just make a palette like that. And here she is, sitting at her squeaky chair. We'll have to make up a nursery rhyme about the squeaky chair. And here she's sitting, doing her art. Oops, my pen is getting... I need to go all through these pens, let me tell you. I go through them pretty fast. Here she is, sitting at her squeaky chair, doing her art. Well, I've got to put a picture up here. And here's the easel. 
goes up like that, of course, like that. So let's refine it. That's what it looks like on the back here. I think I'm going to be okay. Yeah. So let's color it in. Let's refine the old lady. <laughs> there was an old lady who, lo who loved to do art when she finished a page. Of course, that's a canvas, but oh well. We're going to give her a red sweater. Because she looks good in red. I'll give her a red sweater here. What color shall we make the squeaky chair blue? Let's make the squeaky chair blue. She's sitting on a squeaky chair. And oops, we gotta give her some red lips. And let's just put some flowers in here. We'll give her some flowers. She likes to paint flowers, this little old lady does. Of course, she's going to have to have red paint and red on her brush. Yeah, gold. Got to have gold. Let's put some gold in here. Maybe we'll give her gold pants. Why not? I don't think I own any gold pants. <laughs> Might be something to look for. Gold, gold slacks. Let's put some gold on the palette. Let's put some flowers in here. Maybe gold flowers. Fill in the spaces here. It's gold. And Let's go back to this. Let's define this a little bit more. Let's just give her a couple eyes here. There was an old lady who loved to do art. When she finished a page, she thought she was smart. She painted and painted until she was done. And then she looked at it and said, oh, that was fun. Right, there's no O in there. Oh, that was fun. It's, revi it's revising. It's me telling my, making up my nursery rhyme for today. It's all about this old lady doing her art. And she's holding, I've probably got her holding, let's see, if you're holding the palette, your, your thumb is going to kind of come up like that, I guess. <laughs> That's a thumb. Oh, well, you get the idea. I'd have to study that one a little bit more. And that's red paint. We'll put some black on there. Maybe a splash of blue. Let's color this in blue. Yeah. Now, you know how I pointed out on this page the bright colors in here. So, we want to do... Let's see what I have in here. Let's make the easel this pretty pink color. I mean, it's my nursery rhyme. I can do what I want, right? Yeah, this is not getting colored in too well, but don't look colorist. All of those colors. Let's see, let's go dark in here with the chair. 
in that chair, cushion there. Now I'm wanting to color in that entire background, but I want it something that will color it smooth. How about this pink? Highlighter. Put in all those broad areas of color. Put it in here. Now I want it. I want it to go clear up there in a stroke. I'm going to have to get me some more highlighters. These are pen plus gear highlighters. I use them up pretty fast. I've used these since January, so they're, they have a reason to start getting dry. They're starting to get dry, but let's, let's color it in good. I want that broad area of pink in here. There was an old lady who loved to do art. When she finished the page, she thought she was smart. She painted and painted until she was done. And then she looked at it and said, oh, that was fun. <laughs> How many of you identify with that? Enjoy your art. Enjoy your art. I'm seeing white in here. Let's just keep putting the pink on there. in here. There. How fun was that? <laughs> I guess I should sign that nursery rhyme, shouldn't I? Mary Dell Abrams. The Mary Atier. There was an old lady who loved to do art. Let's get, I need to put this aside. Oops. Oops. Let's frame this out. So here's my challenge. Can I write 31 nursery rhymes, one for every day in March? And can I illustrate them? I might need another art journal. Today is really March 2, but we're going to make this March 1, 2019. I'll have to make up another one. Some about color and glitter. I need a word that rhymes with color and a word that rhymes with glitter. That's your assignment. <laughs> Let me put my pins away. And I want to keep out my... Should I put my other one in here? I don't think I did. No, I'll have to find it. All right. So the other thing that I wanted to do, here it is, my other calligraphy pen. The other thing that I wanted to do in here was swatch these beautiful watercolors. And I'm, to do that, I'm going to go to the watercolor page, which is 
Hmm, do I have one in here? Oh, right here. Right here. We're going to swatch these, which means I need to take some time. Oh, I need to get the box open. I did message Lucia Gill. She sent me these. And I messaged her, messaged her on Facebook yesterday and thanked her for these after chat last night. So she has been properly thank you. And I'll probably just keep saying thank you until the cows come home here. Now, let's see. I don't think I want to swatch them all at once because that will take a long time. Let's grab a hold of a little swatch. We'll swatch some. Let's see. What do I want here? My palette knife, maybe, to get these out one at a time. First one will probably be harder to get out. I think you just kind of, maybe I can pull this out like this. For now, and I think what you do is open it like this. Oh, got to get it out there. Now, this is the grape myrtle, and this would be the pearl silver white. So we're going to swatch the grape myrtle and I have to pull the little protective covering off of it. I don't want to mess it up. Maybe I'll come from the back. Well, I don't want to mess up my coloring. It looks like the protective coloring is colored. Oh, look at that. Oh, look. Let's do this. Let's pull this off. Let's save the little label things. I think what I can do, I think I'm seeing Dee Dee do this. I might have to get better at this. You pull this off like this, and then I can put my great myrtle over on this. Like this. this. Gives me an idea. Let's trim that a little. Hopefully that will stick enough. Is that going to stick? Yes, I think it will. So let's swatch the great myrtle. And uh, I'll use a do I have a round brush? Let's see what I have here. I'll use this one. It's clean. And I'm just going to put a little water on my brush. And let's just take a little and swatch it. Oh, it's beautiful. Now that might be a little wet. Oh, wow. Oh, pretty. And this is watercolor paper that I'm using. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. So let's put it in there, put the tray back in, and then you you, you don't have to do this often. Just clamp it back down. Move the little clamp back. And that should hold it in there. So the next one, we'll do three or four of them. Let's wash out my brush. And get on a paper towel here. Wherever my paper towels ran off to. You know, I'll just use this cloth. So 
paint rag that I have next here. All right, so the next one will be Sympathy, Sympathy Purple, Symphony, Symphony Purple. So I think I can cut it along the barcode area here. If I get my, what did I do with my palette knife? Here it is. See if I can't get my palette knife under here and I can. There, just like that. Oh, and then I can just take it. And that even has the label on it. Symphony Purple. I'll just cut it here. And cut it here. And we'll put it. I think I'm going to stagger them on here. Like I put that one there. I'm going to put this one over here. Shall I zoom in a little? I'm not going to do all of these in this stream. That would get a little. That would be a little much. But I'll play with four or five of them. Now, I didn't put quite as much water on my brush. Let's see what it looks like. Now, of course, now I'm, I am, uh, I'm playing with these. This is Symphony Purple. It's a darker color. And I see more of the purple, I think, than you probably do. Oh, I love it. And I do see a beautiful sheen. Let's wash off my brush and wipe it off on my paint towel. Wherever that ran off to. And with watercolors, I have to say, unless you do huge, big paintings, they'll last a long time. They'll last a long time. The next one is... Deep interference. Deep interference. So I'm going to break it over here on the barcode side, hopefully. Yeah. Ooh. And let's cut it. I can't read all the printing on it, so I'm just saving the. I'm just saving the front part. And we'll stagger that down again. It looks like a pretty blue. I'm staggering it, and I should come in color, color, color. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll just do three of these. What I do with my brush? <laughs> yeah. Let's get it a little wet. Oh, isn't that pretty? Now, I like to do it a little light and then come in a little darker. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, wow. So that's deep interference. Let's go back and let's put some of these on here. We'll start with my deep interference here. 
put that in here. Put that, wash out my brush. <sighs> so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty-four colors. I've done three of them. <laughs> uh, but that's all I'm going to do. I am going to come back in now with my Symphony Purple. here I'm gonna get too much on there I want it darker though and then the great myrtle here. I love that color too. That's a pretty color. Great Myrtle right here. Very pretty. Alrighty. So now you want to let these dry out before you close them up. I'm going to put my tray back in. Look, it even has, it even has trays down in here if you would want. But we'll just put the tray back in there. I'm going to leave it out. Let those colors dry. Good. And I'll set it. What did I do? I, I chose a theme for my March journal. It's going to be nursery rhymes. And here's Little Miss Muppet. I put that in. Then I wrote a nursery rhyme, March 1st. I feel like I need to do something more on this. Let's close up my glue. If you don't close that glue up, it can get gunky. Mary knows. I feel like I need to do some more. Let's get this. I'm always opening new markers. Should I just pull one out here and see how it's faring? I toss them over here, too. I need to go through all my markers. I don't like them when they're, when they're not juicy when I'm... They're okay to fill in, but let's see. I feel like I need to... I feel like I need to border it somehow. And this one isn't juicy. I don't know, how does this go? Yeah. Let's start down here. Yeah. Don't want to mark up my pretty cloth that I got in those watercolors. So I wrote a nursery rhyme. And I swatched, I swatched uh, three watercolors. You'll probably see me swatching these as I go. Maybe every now and when I do a stream, I'll swatch three more until I get them all. That'll be eight streams. <laughs> That's a little better. I'm liking that. Shall I zoom out a little? There. How fun is that? How fun was that? I wanted to do something else today. Oh, I know. 
before I leave, the last thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to close up my journal here. Love working in my March journal. Yes, I do. Oh, I, I did the history page. I put chose the theme and put Little Miss Muffet in there. I wrote a nursery rhyme and I swatched three colors. The last thing that I want to do before I leave is I want to paint this fabric. Now I'll need for my cards, I'll need 16, 15 pieces. So I got one out of there. So I think three, I think I can get 16 out of this. So I'm going to, boy, my my gold my gold screen printing ink is is getting down to the bottom here but never fear i have another one i have another one my paint right here and let's just uh let's wet this cloth i'll just start now i should probably start here let's start here i got the screen there i don't mind the screen let's just wet it Get it nice and wet. We want it wet. And I'll leave it on my table to dry. But I'm just going to take some gold paint and swish in here. Now, this is going to be used on the cards that I'm making. I did um, Aunt Beck's Dirty Dozen. And this is going to go in the background underneath some Tim Holtz paper dolls. Let's bring it up now. And this will be my last thing that I'll do before I quit streaming or quit working on this. And then I'll just let this dry, air dry. Let's bring just a little bit more gold in there. And let's get her wet again. You can see that this has a sort of a sizing on it. It takes a little bit for that water to soak in. I should probably move my phone. Just getting it all wet. And that's vinyl. It's vinyl wallpaper on the bottom of this, so that doesn't matter. Last thing that I'm doing here. Smells like we're going to have chili for supper tonight. Smelling good. I can smell it. Mmm. Yeah, look at that. Oops, I got a string on that. Got gunk on that. I'll put that off. This just adds a little color to the card base. And this will all dry. You know, just let it air dry. How fun that was. Now this then I'm this screen ball this speed ball screen printing ink, not the block printing, the screen printing. It's water transparent, I mean water soluble, so if you get it wet again, it will move, but that's okay. I doubt that the cards will be washed, or I guess the journal, whatever, I guess it could get wet again, but I'm not too worried about it. There we go, and let's just water soluble my page here, my <laughs> tabletop. Really, that won't work. Let's get my paint towel and wipe that up. Let's wipe this. Put this in the put this over here. Let's wipe this up or I'll be getting that gold on something. There we go. I'll clean it with alcohol ink when I get done. So thank you for watching. Yes, we thank you for watching. I'll probably be doing another standalone video later this weekend. I have lots I want to get done. I will see you on the next page.